Ollie Courtney survived the city. She's now written a novel, Golden Handcuffs, and it blows the lid, it claims, on the lifestyle of some of the country's richest and most successful people. Hello, Polly. Hello. Well, go on. I'm intrigued. What's it like in there? So, yeah, you've all heard the stories. There's been a lot of interest in the press recently in the city in general, uh, mainly brought about by the huge, huge bonuses that um, I think total $9 billion just in the city, um, some of them being six figures, seven figures. Um, huge amounts of press interest, but very little actually said about what goes on inside the city to earn those bonuses. Um, and that's what my book's about. And what does go on? How, how do you get to the very top? Well, I mean, greed? I should explain that um, my book's from the point of view of some very junior people, so people who have left university thinking that the world is their oyster, the city is paved with gold, and uh, which is exactly the picture that is painted on the, the graduate milk round. And it's very much about sort of um, realism and, and how it really is. And people talk about um, sexism and um, sort of the, the hard culture inside in the city and to some extent well that that is true but I think um, it's slightly more subtle than what people would um, would imagine when you say sexism in the city you kind of imagine people commenting on your various parts of your body if you're a, one of the few women there and um, that's okay that does happen but in the sort of in the way that office banter happens everywhere um, I think what really uh, what what sexism really means in the city is something um, much more of a gradual undermining of, um, of, of what people are of what women are capable of. Um, so it, it's a lot more subtle. And yes, um, there is a very hard culture. It's, um, there's a lot of backstabbing and it, it can get quite nasty, as it can in many cultures, but I think it's much more extreme in the city. Is there any time to be nice in there? I don't think you'd get very far if you were simply nice. What have you got to be there, then? What, what tendencies, what characteristics do you, have you got to have? Well, you've got to have the whole, all, all the stamina and ambition and drive that you do in a, in a lot of jobs. But I think um, you also have to care a lot less about what people think of you. Yet there's no point in, in simply being nice. Like I said, um, you, need, you need to simply be driven by your work and not care about any other elements of, of your life that... Uh, there are some people who try to have a family and be the family man or the, the good mother. And to be honest, I don't think they get on so far. In fact, it's a fact that they just do not get on so far as um, those who don't try and have a family. It's almost impossible to say, I will walk out the door at 7.30 every evening because I have a baby. Uh, in fact, there are people that try to do that and they just don't get promoted. Were you making a fortune? I was making a fortune relative to my peers. Um, I, I left university... And within the first year, I um, earned myself £50,000, which obviously at the age of 21, 22, is huge. But um, had I stayed there just another few years, then it would be uh, double that. And um, I mean, I have friends who are still in the city and they're earning easily six-figure sums just in bonuses. Why did you get out then? Uh, it sounds very corny, but um, I actually valued my, my life and my personality and my friends and all the things that I was lacking in there. Uh, more than than my my pay packet. Presumably, the reason anyone goes in and here's me being presumptuous, Polly, and tell me off if I've got it wrong. Uh, but presumably, the reason why someone goes into the city, it's not for any kind of, of life fulfilment. It's got to be all about money. It's got to be enjoying the cheer. Almost always, yes. Um, I was sort of one of the exceptions I would say. Um, yes, money always comes into it and, and also the status that goes with it. So it's nice to be able to say, I work at ABC Bank, um, I'm just not naming any names at the moment, but um, and you can see the eyebrows raised, people are impressed with where you work and, and what you do. So that's nice. And of course, it's nice to have six figures coming into your bank account every year. Um, it, there, there is something else, though, I think that drives, well, it drove me and drives a lot of other people into the city. And that's the, the, the challenge of it all, it's, it is hard to get in and it's hard to stay and make it to the top. And that was something that appealed to me. I actually, I, I never really did care that much about the money. That, maybe people won't believe that, but it wasn't all about the money at all or the prestige. It was, it was the challenge and the, knowing that it was a cutthroat environment there and that it, you have to be damn good to get to the top. Do you have to be worse than damn good, though? Do you have to cut the throat of your colleague beside you? you got to stab them in the back? 
that there is a lot of backstabbing, uh, especially around certain times of year. So just before bonuses are awarded and everyone's appraising each other, there's obviously a very um, formal system for appraisal uh, where everyone has to rate everyone else. And it's a, it's a sort of form of self-preservation in the bad times and the self-promotion in the good times. So, yeah, you do have to stab people in the back if you really want to get on. And is that part and parcel so much of the game that you all know you're doing it to each other? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody does know, and that, that's just the way you play the game. I just don't think there's not really a lot of altruism in the city. You couldn't have too many friends, real friends, in there, though. Um, there were, it depended on level. Um, it was a very hierarchical. I mean, the city is very, very hierarchical. So you go in at one level, the next year you'll be promoted to the next, uh, the next sort of year group, and then the next, and so on. Um, and so because you're recruited in year groups and they'll be say, 30 or so of the same age, of the same rank, very similar people because they've all been recruited on the same basis, um, you do bond with people. And of course, um, in my case, we got sent out to New York for an eight-week sort of boot camp training, which was great fun. Uh, we got awarded, we got given a £7,500 lump sum at the beginning of that just to help us have fun in New York. It was very hard training as well, but of course we bonded because there were 30 or so from each of the countries, so 300 odd people, um, all aged between 20 and 30. Obviously, you're going to have fun and you're going to bond there, and then when you get into the real world, the workplace, those friendships remain. Um, it just, it's a question of which departments you're all in, whether there is that coming among, among your peer groups. What do you feel at the end of a day working in there? Um, exhausted generally it depends on the time and, and which day it was but um, very often a day will last for two days so you're going at nine o'clock one day and actually won't make it home until sometime the following day uh, that's not always the case but that's that's sometimes the case and it's also it's the unpredictability actually that gets to a lot of people including myself so you don't actually know what your day uh, what's in store for you um, and that's when it can get exhausting because you can't plan you can't say, yes, I'll meet you at 7 o'clock for the cinema on Friday night because there's a sort of 60% chance some work will get landed on your desk and you're going to have to do that. That always takes priority. Let's turn now to the people who are making mega bucks, Polly. The people who are, we read about who are getting these five and six and seven, and my goodness, I don't know how many million pound bonuses. Is there something dirty about them? Is it, yeah, can you remain a human being with your feet in the ground if you have that much money? I've met and known quite a few of them, and uh, there, there is a type, and as you said earlier, I think there is, uh, money does come into it in a huge way. Most of them, i.e. those who have made it into the millions um, for their bonuses, are uh, highly driven by money, and, and nothing else really does matter. So, yeah, there is a type. What's that type? Uh, not not particularly friendly in general. <laughs> there, there are people who never saw their... They'd have kids. They'd have a large house in the country, a wife, kids, dogs, whatever, and didn't really see them, didn't really care, to be honest. Of course, you could make more money than you did in the city with this book, Golden Handcuffs, didn't you? A possibility. Uh, <laughs> and the royalties start rolling in. Um, yeah, that, that was never my intention. It was certainly not to make money when I wrote the book. It was to get the story out there. Um, it, it may be a, a little extra for me, but, but it seems to be working, getting the story out there. And just my final question to you, because uh, I wouldn't know about having a lot of money, but people say it doesn't make you happy anyway. Do you buy into that? In my case, absolutely. Um, it didn't make me happy. It made me pretty miserable. I had all this money coming into my current account, and I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have time to spend it. Nice to talk to you tonight. Thank you. I've enjoyed that. Thank you.